Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently picked up a pre-built from eBay with an i7 7700K inside. The 7700K was one of the last quad-core i7s from Intel, launching on the Socket 1151 platform in early 2017. Today I wanted to see how this 4-core, 8-thread processor compares to the modern i3 12100F, one of the best lower cost options available right now. Both will be running at stock speeds today along with 32 gigs of 3200MHz dual channel DDR4 and paired with a 4070 Super. It's difficult to recommend buying into an older platform, especially if you go in at the top as there's nowhere else to go, no further upgrades to make, but let's get straight into the games. So first of all I ran Fallout 4 uncapped which is definitely not a good idea all the while the F4 SE hasn't been updated. With the i3 12100F on the right hand side of the screen we saw 149 FPS on average with a 1% low of 91 and a 0.1% low of 66. On the left hand side of the screen we have the older i7 7700K still going strong here with 125 FPS on average, a 1% low of 79 and a 0.1% low of 45. So still a very decent result here as I'd expect from this older title. But I wouldn't recommend playing this one uncapped anyway at the moment as the physics get all sped up. Kingdom Come Deliverance next and I just had to test this because this is quite intensive especially on older and quad core CPUs. At 1080p with the very high preset we saw 71 FPS with the 7700K on average of course with a 1% low of 39 and a 0.1% low of 28. A few stutters here and there but definitely more than playable. The i3 however pulled ahead with 92 FPS although this wasn't unaffected by stutters and frame drops. The 1% low was 47 so a little bit better than the i7 and the 0.1% low came in at 25 so a little bit worse this time around. Next up we have The Witcher 3 with the next gen update installed. At 1080p of course, as with the other results, we were using the Ultra preset this time, TAAU, and with the i7 we got a respectable 90 frames per second, but it's clear that there are some severe bottlenecks, not just here, but of course in the rest of today's titles. The 4070 Super is being held back, but that's what we want because both of our CPUs are in theory reaching their maximum potential in most scenarios and this of course allows us to draw a comparison from the figures. Now 90 FPS on average was pretty good with a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 45. The i3 however averaged 110 with a 1% low of 73 and a 0.1% low of 54 so more consistent as well. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 using the Ultra preset. I took a drive through this particularly busy and CPU intensive part of Night City. And as I said before, the i7 7700K will hold a lot of modern and more powerful GPUs back, but so will the i3 to be honest, and that's clear to see here. Now I think the i7 still put in a decent effort with 66 FPS, so we were still breaking through that 60 FPS barrier. The 1% low was 37 and the 0.1% low was 31. The i3 actually performed a little bit worse again in terms of that 0.1% figure coming in at just 28, but the 1% and average figures were slightly improved with 42 and 76 respectively. So, well, more than slightly improved, especially in terms of that average. Next up I tried Starfield, it had to be done because this is a bit of a mess on a lot of hardware still. However the i7 managed to hit 49 frames per second but it wasn't unaffected by frame dips and drops especially in New Atlantis here. It wasn't necessarily inconsistent in terms of the gameplay, it was just not all that great anyway to be fair. The i3 hit that magical 60 FPS barrier, 61 to be precise, although this wasn't unaffected once again by frame dips and drops with a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 26. Alan Wake 2 is certainly more GPU intensive and I think that's why our results were a lot closer here. The i7 managed a very respectable 92 frames per second with a 1% low of 69, nice, and a 0.1% low of 60. The average for the i3 was 96, so just a few frames more, and the 1% low was 74. The 0.1% figure was 63, so a pretty close set of results for this one. 
Finally, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, which can be a lot more CPU intensive in and around busier towns and cities like Valentine here, for example. That said, the i7, in my opinion, still did pretty well with 91 FPS, a 1% low of 64 and a 0.1% low of 55. These 0.1% lows were similar between the two processors, but once again, the i3 pulled ahead in terms of that 1% figure and of course with that average as well hitting 108 fps i'll finalize with the cinebench r23 results as well which also swing in favor of the i3 the newer quad core chip as expected in both the single and multi results here i'm sure a lot of you were anticipating that too now overclocking the 7700K, of course, may help close the gap a little bit. I still think the i3 would pull ahead most of the time, and of course, it's a low effort win. You can slap it into a cheap H610 board, stick the stock cooler on it, and away you go. The same can be said for the 7700K, but with the i3, you don't feel like you need to overclock it. Um, you can't anyway, unless you use really specific boards uh, to get the most out of it you can just stick it in a cheap board and you know that you're basically getting the best performance that you can and that performance is honestly really good primarily though we are focusing on the i7 the older cpu because we know the i3 does well these days and to be honest i still really like it if you bought an i7 7700k brand new all those years ago then you're probably still having a pretty decent time in games not to mention the overclocking potential i'm sure any of you watching with one of these cpus have definitely played around with overclocking during your ownership. I'm actually really looking forward to upgrading my 7700K pre-built and messing around with the clock speeds myself. It'll certainly be cool to see how it does throughout the year and beyond when it comes to modern games and new releases. I'm really tempted to keep this one because to me it's a bit of an iconic CPU that I probably couldn't afford at the time and now that I have one it's just been a pleasure to use despite losing out to modern quad core i3s. Now when it comes to pricing it's interesting really I can only speak for the UK of course but the i3 12100F is available for around £80 which is a really good deal. The 7700K can only be found used these days and sometimes it's even more expensive than the 12100F. Motherboard costs as well are worth considering. For simplicity and practicality the i3 is going to make a lot more sense in this day and age but there we go leave your thoughts down below of course as always and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one thanks for watching